Hi there. Okay, so this video is for people who are newer to painting with acrylics or thinking about what could be a substitution for some of the um, things that I have listed in the supply list. And I also want you to know that the supply list has got everything I use and you certainly don't need all of that at all. And I'm hoping when you're done looking at this video, you can kind of make a decision about what you need for the classroom. And the first thing obviously is a canvas. And the reason I chose this size, it's eight inches by 24. It's because it fits in the camera lens. However, it's also a great size to get started when you haven't done a lot of acrylics before, you may not wanna go bigger. Okay, so the canvases, I got these super inexpensive on Amazon and there's a link to them in my art supply list, but you could go into any local um, art store and they would all have a horizontal canvas that should be fine. You do not need to prime it. You do not need to do anything to your canvas. Once you buy it in a store, it will already be ready to go. All right, so that is the canvas. So let me just put this aside. And I wanna talk next about paints. In the lessons, I will be primarily using Nova colors. And if you're in the United States, you can get these paints. They do have a shipping charge, but I think it's, well worth it. The price of one of these tubs is a lot less than the price of one of these um, tubes that you can find in your art store. So think about that. When you look at the shipping costs, just think about getting maybe a few extra colors. They go a long way. I love the quality. They're a U.S. company and um, I really like to use them. So they are my favorite. I also have this little color chart where I will also make a photo of this in the lessons of the colors that I'm using. And also by adding a little bit of white high flow, which we're gonna talk about the high flow in a minute, that you can be mixing different colors. So you don't really need like every single color you can definitely get away with a red and adding a little blue to make purple or adding a little bit more white to make more pink. So for instance, you don't really need pink if you wanna make your own or if you wanna make your own purple. There's lots of different options. I'm just using all of these. And in fact, I'm not even using this quinacridone magenta, but I wanted to show it to you in case there's some Nova color lovers out there that wanna know my favorite color. That's this one. And if you add a little white, it just makes this fabulous pink. It's like a fuchsia. But I wanted to talk about different brands and different and the differences. So the reason why I like Nova color a lot is it's a soft consistency. It's not too thick and it's not too thin. I know it's kind of like right in between. And for some of my international friends, there is a brand called Liquitex Professional Acrylic Artist Color and it's soft body. These are very similar in their consistency and that's why I like them both. I also wanted to let you know that there are many, many student brands out there, okay? There's tons of student grades and when I say student that just means it's not a paint for professionals it's a paint for people who are getting into the hobby who are taking classes who are experimenting they're a lot less money and they're also a really great um, way to get started so there's different types and you can see these in your art store too Snellier makes um, a bunch of ones that I like I also like using these to mix my own fluid paints, which we'll talk about in a minute because they're easy to pour with this little cap. Amsterdam makes a whole bunch of colors and all of the colors that I use, you can find in all of these different grades. One thing that I don't really recommend, but of course, if you have them, try them and use them is these little craft um, acrylic paints that you can find in like Michael's or Hobby Lobby, they're not really the paints that I love to use in my work because they're really thin and they don't have that kind of oomph you need. So if you have them and you wanna practice, super, but I wouldn't go out and buy these. And um, you can just upgrade a little bit to a student grade and get a little bit more than this uh, container. I just wanted to let you guys know about that. 
I'm also gonna be using this Liquitex Heavy Body Acrylic, and the only reason I'm using it is because I ran out of my Payne's Gray. Really, Payne's Gray has got like a little shade of navy in black. So you can use black, a little bit of navy. In the lesson, I think I mix in even a little bit of purple. So acrylic paints, you can find a lot of brands. I try to stay in the soft body. It's not as thick as a heavy body. Sometimes the heavy body to me is just too thick to paint with. I don't wanna build it up so much that I have this really big amount of textures. So that's one thing to keep in mind. And if you had to like pick a few colors and you didn't wanna get the whole range, I would go with your primary colors and then you can mix those together with some whites and come up with some beautiful colors. So I'll be using the Nova Yellow Green the Nova Hot Pink, the Cerulean Blue, the Parole Red, Pyrrole Red maybe, <laughs> not Parole, <laughs> the Deoxycine Violet, the Cadmium Orange, Blue Green or really any turquoise you have, and regular white. All right, so those are the colors that I use in my acrylic paints. And then again, if you had a Payne's gray or a black and you wanna mix it with some blue, that's all you need. All right, let's talk about the acrylic inks and fluid paints. All right, so a fluid paints or inks, homemade paint, this is one of my favorite things to work with. The titanium white, you definitely don't need a huge tub. If you're brand new to using fluid paint, I recommend a one ounce and that's all you need. You just need a tiny little bit. And this is just to show you when I mix in the white, when you mix in the white, the different colors you can get. I also can mix with my other acrylic inks and my regular paint to get all sorts of colors. The golden is, uh, is considered a high flow and you can also get the same type of thing in these acrylic inks. The inks are a tiny bit thinner than the high flow. They're about the same cost and um, they do the same thing for me. I use them the same way, but I also make my own and I highly encourage you to make your own if you are on a budget and you wanna just experiment. There's a link to how to make your own inks in the classroom as well as on my website in the supplies list. If I had a choice though, and I didn't know what to get, do I spend the money on the high flow or the acrylic inks? I probably would tend to go with the high flow. I think it's a better quality, but right now the cost of these guys have gone up. They're kind of like about the same. I just wanted to show you, I don't use these in my class, but these are the high flow acrylics by Golden and they also come in a one ounce. You don't need to go buy both. The colors that I'm using in the class would be the light green by Dale Rowney, Azo orange, which at the time of doing the listings, I couldn't find this online, but it's the same as the Dale Rowney flame orange. I'm also using a turquoise, Dale Rowney. I'm using a Payne's gray. And in a tiny little part, I did play around with this fluorescent pink. It's actually fluorescent rose and you don't, you don't need to go buy this at all. I just have it. Having a nice big pop of color is awesome with um, some of these inks. So let's talk brushes. I'm not the best keeper of brushes, so don't judge me about my brushes. <laughs> but I do like King Art. I think they're a great brand. You can find these online or um, on Amazon, and I've got links to a few of them there. I love the angle shader brushes. So I have a couple of them in different sizes, and I'm using the 3 8 and the 1 half, and they're just great. You can do so much with the brush. You can just paint, paint naturally down like this, or you could pull it up and make a sharp line. They're just one of my favorite types of brush, so I'll be using these. I also will be using some rounds, and these are actually both number six, but I also will be using uh, four and eight, and they're just great to get into some little details, and they're just a very sort of, you know, staple brush to have to play around with. So you can get the rounds in different sizes, so you wanna just get a small one and a little bit of bigger one, like a medium size. That's all you really need. 
If you wanna have a bunch of different brushes and experiment, that's great, but I will primarily be using like these type of sizes. I don't usually paint with bigger brushes. Um, I like to do lots of little detail works with them. Then I do use a stencil brush, but you definitely do not need one. But if you love stencils and it's something you're interested in, then you could go ahead and pick up a couple stencil brushes because they are easier to put the paint onto the stencils. The other thing is I will be using a variety of sponge brushes and you can just grab these at a local art store or even um, at, at a hardware store, but I have different sizes and they're really inexpensive. So that's another sort of staple. And then this is a great brush cleaner for those who are interested in cleaning your brushes, which I highly recommend. It's called the Master's Brush Cleaner and Preserver. This is really good. I wish I used them earlier in my brush brushes, but I haven't, um, and it's great to clean up your brushes with. I love stencils, and in this class, we will be using a couple, but I just wanted to point out, you could use any stencil you want. It's really just, I'm gonna show you how I use them to make some of the marks in our painting. And you could also create your own stencils from potato or vegetables. There's lots of YouTube videos on how to make your own stencil. So please don't go out and buy any if you're not, if you don't have the budget for it or you're not feeling like you wanna do that, it's totally fine. The stencils are a very minor part of this project. Um, but I do have two that I love and I've linked to them and they're both from Stencil Girl. I just, Stencil Girl is like my favorite place to get stencils now. I think they have so many from different artists and they're really unique and really fun to use. Okay, paint pens are one of my favorite things. I feel like every time I have an art supply, I'm like, that's my favorite thing. <laughs> but we will be doing a lot of details with some paint pens on our canvas, including the writing and just some mark making. I'm super excited to teach you guys about this. All right, so my favorite brand, and there are brands out there. You do not have to get Posca pens. Sharpie makes them, Tombow. There's a whole line of different brands. I found that I like Posca the best because they have a beautiful range of colors, and they're right up my alley. Like These are like just made for me, I feel like. <laughs> but there are different sizes. You don't need all of these. If you have to just pick a handful, I would get a black, white, like an orange or pink, maybe a turquoise, just a few. And they're really used for highlights and also for writing. And so I am gonna be using a white Posca pen on my writing. This is a number one. I'm just gonna do you do a little demo on the different widths of these so you can see when you're buying them. A one is this thick and they make beautiful little dots and you can get them in all sorts of colors. For the writing, I'll be using the white. White's obviously not gonna show up on here, <laughs> but these are the ones. Then you can also get a three, all right? So here's a three width. And I love this orange, it's nice and bright. And this is a lilac. Beautiful color. This is a fuchsia. And so you can get these colors as singles in some stores. If you have a good art store in your neighborhood, then you can get some beautiful singles or you can get sets. And I usually get sets on Amazon and I prefer the pastel set, but the pastel is not gonna come with a black and a a white, they're gonna come in these other colors. And moving up to the five, it's obviously even thicker. If you are working on a small canvas, you probably won't even need the fives, you would just need some threes and ones. If you're working bigger, then I suggest you go up in your paint pen size so it shows up. But I wanted to show you these awesome colors. These pastel colors come in both the fives and the threes, all right? So there is a little bit out there for everybody. You just have to kind of shop around and see. And then sometimes they'll squirt out just like that. So this is good to demo. <laughs> 
When you're working with paint pens, I highly recommend you have a scrap sheet of paper nearby and you always just blot it out first because you don't want that to happen on your painting. And if it did, just take a paper towel and wipe it off. And speaking of paper towels, I thought I had a roll right here, but I don't. My mom told me about Viva paper towels and that's all I use now because they don't have any marks and um, little designs on them and they're great to wipe off. So if you had some splotches, you just wipe off right away. Okay, so these are the paint pens that I'll be using, but certainly you can look for other brands out there. I try to stay away from the oil base. I'm working with mostly the water base and um, there's definitely options. So if you only wanna get a couple, just grab a few, but you wanna make sure you get a paint pen for your writing. And the writing, we're gonna do a couple things. I'm just gonna put this down, I know it's wet, but I'm using tracing paper. When I write my story, when I write the prophecy on my canvas, I actually am gonna experiment first with my writing, make sure I've got the flow right, the amount of letters and lines. So we're gonna be doing that. I'm also going to include a photo of the writing that I'm doing so that if you wanted to, you can even trace that. So some tracing paper is good or regular markers, fine. And I'm gonna show you step-by-step step on how to do the lettering. Then I have palette paper or you could use plastic. You just don't wanna use paper plates when you're working with acrylics cause it's gonna absorb it and that will waste your paint. So you don't wanna do that. So in one of the earlier lessons, I'll be using a graphite water soluble crayon and this is by Lyra or you could actually use a Neo 2 that's in gray or black. It doesn't really matter. But in the lesson, we are gonna be dipping this crayon into water and either one is fine. They really do the same thing. So the Neo 2s, I won't be using them in this class, but I love them and I use them in a lot of my classes. And I also really like this Lyra. So if you do a lot of charcoal and some sketches and some beautiful drawings, you might want to experiment with the Lyra. And then from time to time, I like to dry my layers and I have a link to this, definitely not necessary. You could even use a blow dryer or you could just let your layers air dry, but the Ranger Heat It is awesome. So I love using this. It was worth the, I think it was like 30 bucks, totally worth it. It's quiet and it doesn't blow everything like crazy, like a blow dryer would do. So I really like it. Um, I also use a couple palette knives. I'm just trying to find all my miscellaneous stuff. I have a couple palette knives. I already talked about paper towels. If you want to seal it when you're finished, there's lots of options to spray varnish, and I have a link to one um, in there too. Okay, so that's just a little overview of all of the supplies. And again, please don't feel like you have to go buy everything. You certainly don't. If you're brand new, I would suggest getting some primary colors, some white, a few paint pens, a couple inks, and really just experiment. And then you could take the course again as many times as you want, it's yours forever. And then you could introduce new colors and um, supplies as you go. And I want you guys to have fun and please email me at hello at andreagarvey.com if you have any questions and I cannot wait for you guys to dive into this class.